Thank you for taking this moment to breathe and to listen to what can change your life forever. My name is Ragna Sinikas, and I am the founder of Starpreneur TV, How to Dominate the Decade Talk Show, World Woman Conference and Awards, the creator of Coral Desk, the coach of the change makers, and co-author of the Dominate the Decade book. My mission is to empower through education, and I thank you for joining me. Today, I have the honor to talk with Alex Stern from Boston, United States of America. And Alex has been called as the America's startup success expert and recognized as top 100 influencer by Influence Magazine. So, ladies and gentlemen, please help me to say hello. And uh, Alec, can you tell us your story, who you are, why are you doing what you're doing? Why is it your passion? Uh, so, so passion in terms of, uh, from the business perspective, um, you know, I've worked with small businesses and, and entrepreneurs, you know, uh, a lot over the years. And in some of the businesses I've been in, it's directly helped small businesses and entrepreneurs. And um, so, so, you know, I just, I, I'm passionate about uh, helping them and raising the water level of small businesses because, I mean, they're the lifeblood of most, most economies. You know, when you walk down Main Street in any country, you know, there's uh, uh, the small businesses are the ones that typically are, you know, doing uh, employing the, the most, and you know, obviously feeding the GDP and and helping um, helping you know the communities thrive. So. And can can you tell us a little more about your background, like your career? Why why have you chosen this career, and what what have been the steps that you had to learn in order to get to where you are today? Yeah, and so so uh, you know, I think it uh, grow well. Sort of as I grew up, my mom my mom was a, she was a uh, you know a small business and. Um, I got to experience the, you know, what she was going through and starting a business, building up a business, buying out a partner. There, there was sort of a lot of things that, uh, that she sort of was experiencing. And it was, it was a part-time thing. I mean, she was a stay-at-home mom with, with, with kids, but, but she was doing this sort of on the side and at night and weekends. And I, you know, I would chip in and help now and then with, with the business. And um, so I got to I worked on had something to do with helping small businesses. So whether it was hardware and software or platforms for small business or, uh, you know, I, I, I'd work on sort of catalogs on the net, which became websites to then e-commerce to payment systems. And, and then the most notable one was working um, uh, on the front end, which was digital marketing for small business and starting initially with email marketing. And that was co-founding Constant Contact. Uh, which is you know known around the world, and we uh, we were an overnight success in 18 years. I, I like to say, but we went public at year 10, and then we sold uh, for 1.1 billion uh, year 18. And so that was you know three four years ago. But but it was uh, um, it, it became a passion of mine to help small business and and do what I can to 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 shop local and and help help the uh, the local economy. Incredible story, incredible results. So, and we have promised today to give the strategies and, and also the tactics that uh, are proven and everybody can walk away and, and uh, use them in their small businesses. So, um, let's talk about the pillars for achieving small, uh, small business success. Uh, can you share with us uh, your go to market uh, strategies? Yeah, so, so uh, you know, the pillars to achieving success is really born out of all the work I've done. Uh, personally, I, I, you know, I've, I've been on the founding team or co-founded eight companies, and we've had five exits, uh, you know, two, two IPOs and three acquisitions. So a lot of learnings in, in sort of doing that and doing it repeatedly. I also go around the world speaking at conferences and get to meet startups and small businesses and, and work with entrepreneurs to uh, sort of te test some of the some of these pillars, if you will, and and this is really around stepping back to kind of either the early days to what do you do to set yourself apart and get going when there's more things you don't have than you do, you know, in the early days of a business, or if you're in business, what do you do to it's start up and, and scale up? So what can you do to scale up? 
Uh, and so, so I, you know, I, I guess, you know, uh, setting the, the stage for, for the conversation around go to market and, and scaling, maybe I'll just step back and just talk about a couple of the pillars that, that, that you start with and, or I start with anyway. And the, the first one is really talking about kind of what's that one core thing you're going to do in your business to succeed. And I'll often, you know, at conferences ask for a show of hands, you know, raise your hand. Um, how many of you know that one core thing? If you looked at a dartboard, the bullseye in the center of a dartboard, what's that one thing you're going to do to succeed? And about five to 10% of the hands go up. So what that's telling us is that 90% of the folks haven't really figured out exactly what that one thing is. And so, so we all sort of suffer from what I call the bicycle wheel syndrome. So imagine if we had a bicycle wheel and every spoke on the wheel was another idea that we we're going to do to help our target market. And I would often say, find the one spoke that you're going to start with. All those other spokes, all those other ideas are great. Put them on the shelf, set them aside. But what's the one thing? Uh, because you've got to find one that you're going to start with. Because if you uh, get out there with that first thing and you start to uh, get it in the hands of customers, um, you're going to start to get feedback. You're going to get success stories, uh, potentially get some revenue. Uh, you might get someone to you know, potentially refer you to others and you get the flywheel of the business going, which means you then get some revenue. And then when you get that revenue, you can then start to do things like hire folks or start to invest additionally in, in, in your marketing and, and, and so on. So, so know what that one core thing is. Um, and so once you figured out what that is, you've got to get out there and test, test that with, with your target market. Don't be in what I call you know, stealth mode where you're, you know, want to kind of keep the secret, you know, and, uh, and not, you know, you know, keep it close to the vest. Don't want to tell people what you're doing. And, you know, that you know, you're just setting yourself up, you know, for failure. If you can't get out early, even if it's incomplete, even if it's just a concept, go to your small, your, your target market, in my case, most of the time with small business, and then ask them, you know, what are the things you're looking for? What are the goals and objections? What's your vision? Yeah, um, you know, and, and so when they start saying things like, I want to stay top of mind to my customers. I want to drive them back in. I want more revenue. I want my current customers to tell other others about uh, about us. Um, you know, all of those things. When they when they tell you that, if you're then turning around and offering a solution uh, that's gonna you know, drive some of those the goals and objectives for them, then there's a match and 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 you're onto something. And then when you start to put it in the hands of the, your customers or prospective customers initially and get to get that feedback, they're going to tell you exactly kind of what they need. Uh, oftentimes someone will say, well, I was a small business once. I know what small businesses need. You know, you've got to go out and talk to others. You can't work in a vacuum and, and assume you know the answer. And, and this changes daily. And especially as things uh, arise, you know, in the, the economy or, or what we're sort of facing today, you know, with a lot of way th ways things are changing, uh, you've got to go out and test these things and get that feedback. So those are kind of kind of the couple of things in the setup for once you've got it out there, then you could talk about kind of your go to market and and the things you're going to do. Which um, I don't know if you, if you if you want me to kind of continue on and, and get into yeah, that. Or? I would, yeah, I would I would love love if we walk through all the pillars that that are needed to be successful. So if you could could share what are the other pillars for the success. Sure. Yeah, there, there are quite a few. And so I'm, I'm going to just kind of pick some highlights. Um, and then uh, at the end, I can share uh, uh, kind of a workbook uh, as a giveaway to everyone, um, which will, will highlight ones that I don't necessarily talk about here today. Uh, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. And um, of course, today we have a lot of time. And if you want to hang out for the day and chat, I'm, 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 I'm all yours. <laughs> so, so, so the next thing is really thinking about um, kind of your go to market. And so so oftentimes we now have a product and we want, want to bring it to market and we say, well, how am I going to do that? And there's digital ways to get your things exposed and get out, you know, with uh, pay-per-click and display ads and, and uh, marketplaces and ways to just be seen through others. And uh, there, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, kind of online ways to, to do things. Um, oftentimes, initially, we're not going to have the funds to do a lot of that. So we're going to go talk to our target market. If you're dealing with an enterprise client, oftentimes it's, you know, through the phone or, or you know, uh, at least today it's phone and zoom and other tools, but, but, you know, you may do face to face. And if, if it's a uh, more small, small business, um, you know, you're, you're not going to necessarily be in the position to go door to door. And, and we heard a lot of no's, you know, about what we were doing, um, 
in several of the startups and, the, and specific with constant contact, you know, we heard a lot of no's around, no one's selling to small business. You know, you can't, you can't go door to door. You know, in North America alone, there's 30 million small businesses, associations, nonprofits. How are you going to get to all of them? Uh, that's the, you know, and at the time, there, you know, the three of us in an attic when we started, you know, constant contact, two folks on the technical side, I was on the business side. I always said it, we had three on the business side, me, myself, and I. Um, so it wasn't, I wasn't going to be able to go out and knock on doors and, and be successful in scaling. So then the kind of the question then on the go-to-market is, um, you either go one-to-one -one direct to your customers, and initially you did that. Uh, I'd say when you're bringing your product to market, don't go to people you know. Don't go to pe people you did business with before. Don't go to family. Uh, go, to, go to strangers. And if you can tell them your, you know, ask them kind of what their goals and objectives are and give them your value prop and, and a proposition and they're interested in what you're saying, um, you know, then you can, uh, you know, talk about possibly offering, offering, what, offering them what you, what you have. Uh, so in the early days, I went out and got, you know, four customers, you know, that were willing to take the product uh, and they were folks I didn't know before. And so, so again, we got some brutal, honest feedback. Uh, which was uh, feedback's a gift. So we would take that and, and also suggestions and, and needs and, um, you know, and, and concerns and places where there was friction using the offering. And so you want to make it frictionless so it's easy and, and something that's, that's wanted. So that so was very helpful. And then from there, it's say, okay, well, how are we going to scale? And, you know, I'll often ask folks, um, I kind of wear a lot of hats. I've invested in businesses. I'm a limited partner in G20 Ventures here in Boston. That's tech investment, um, and then of course all the ones I meet. You know, I'll say, well, you know, how are you going to scale? And the answer, you know, if you're sitting with an investor, for example, and they ask you how you're going to scale, the answer is not hire a hundred salespeople. They're not going to want to invest in you to turn around and hire a hundred salespeople to replicate what you're doing, unless it's an enterprise product that has a long sales cycle and it requires, you know, a lot of hands-on and not one person can manage many of those at once. Of course, you're gonna need additional salespeople. But if it's something like working with small businesses or, or larger uh, populations of your target market, and it's worldwide, you know, there, there has to be another answer. And, and so the answer is channels, partnerships, alliances. And so I would often uh, kind of ask the question, where is your target market hanging out? Where are they going? Where's their go-to to get information? What are the associations and member orgs that they're belonging to to learn and get best practices and thought leadership around, or around new things, cool new things that could help them grow? Um, you know, the, those, those channels and those partnerships come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, I often would say, uh, and this is a whole talk unto itself, but uh, I would often say that, that you, you know, you go and, um, and seek out those trusted resources. And again, big and small. Uh, you know, these large amassed marketplaces of uh, tools and resources or they're adding value added services or products and you're, you're sort of another one they recommend down to the trusted local resources. Who's actually going into your target market every day or every week and providing other services or other products where you could uh, empower them with what you're doing for them to tell the story, refer you. Uh, potentially co-market what you're doing or, or, or even market it and sell it to, to those, those current customers they're working with. So those are small business consultants, marketing consultants, marketing agencies, web developers, PR firms. You know, the list go on for service-oriented folks that are delivering you know, products and services to, uh, to, to your target market. And now they can walk in potentially and, and promote what you're doing. And so I would say with every business – on the line, I challenge everyone that there's at least 15 categories of these channel, uh, these uh, sort of channel categories that you can work in. And I gave you one already. Uh, I'm not going to ask you know uh, to, to uh, call it out because I'm not going to hear you. Go ahead, you can yell it out if you heard which one I told you. <laughs> I, I, right? I, I just heard someone and <laughs> I just heard heard someone on a beach in Turks and Caicos telling me that it was associations and member orgs. You're right. Um, and so I will come down there and buy you a drink when I can. Uh, so, so association and member orgs is, the, is one category 
because they're local, regional, national, uh, they're, and they're, they're for everything that, uh, for every business that we're all in, there are associations and member orgs gathering on a regular basis, either online, offline, podcasts, you know, web, webinars, you know, uh, publications, website content, um, you know, and then of course the face-to-face -face conferences when we get back to them. And so they're gathering and, and so they're looking for thought leadership and best practices and things that, that can help their members succeed. So their members are your target market and you can come in and talk about best practices to help them succeed. It's a win-win. The association looks great because they brought a new product or service to that member org or to the membership. And then they, they you know, that justifies why they're paying a member fee to be part of the membership. And then, you know, you get your FaceTime in front of them in a lot of different ways. And there's many, many ways besides just face-to-face. -face. Um, and so, so association member orgs is one that we all share. Then when we get to looking at the other categories, there's 14 more minimum. I'm going to give you all homework to go figure out what are some of these. And oftentimes I'll ask an audience, you know, who is doing this today and what types of partners or partnerships or alliances uh, are you working with and are you, you know, what kind of success are you having? You know, a small number of hands will go up. So people aren't necessarily thinking about sell through someone else. It's the sell to, let me go talk to my target market direct or sell through someone else where, again, where your target market's hanging out. So, so it's really important to think about channels and thinking about them in your business because if someone asks you the question, how are you gonna scale, or you more importantly need to answer it for yourself, I'm gonna kind of bet Bet you all a dollar each, U.S. dollar. I don't know if that the most valuable dollar out there, whatever you want to call it. I'll bet you it, and 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 um, and you will see that channels will typically or usually be the answer for scale. And so, so thinking about that, um, in the case of constant contact, you know, when we again three of us in an attic, when we sold the company 18 years later, we had 750,000 paying customers. We were about 450 million in revenue. Um, average customer paid about $42 a month, starting at like 20, so very low cost, but it needed a lot to make up the volume. Um, and when we had 1,500 great, you know, uh, uh, employees that were delighting the customer daily, customers daily. And of course, the uh, we uh, the last part, which ties to this, is we had over 8,000 partners, alliances. And that's a very conservative number because some categories we lost count. But the bottom line is we had 8,000. The other key thing is when we started, after I got the four customers, uh, channels was our strategy. We we're 100% channels because we couldn't go door to door. I couldn't bring in and hire you know, a, an army of salespeople to go knocking on door to door around the world. So we had partnerships that we set up around the world of all different types, shapes, and sizes for them to go and promote and market us to the, to that, to the target market. Um, so it's really, really, uh, it's really important to, uh, to see where channels will fit in your business. And again, I challenge you all, I've done, done the same test, uh, testing with nonprofits, uh, member orgs, uh, small businesses of all types. And usually there's a, there's a channel in the business and it, the question is going and finding it. Oh, great. We, there's a lot of people which uh, now really see the need for marketing and branding for the companies. And I think that uh, the main thing where the small businesses are actually struggling is the exposure and how to, how to really keep the client or, or deepen the client relationship. And, uh, and in the end of the day today, also how to uh, attract the new, new clients. Uh, can you share some, some good tactics that you have personally, you have uh, proven results on, on the, those topics? Yeah. So again, uh, kind of tying it back into the, the concepts around the, uh, the, the, the pillars. So, so let's first talk about um, cu customers, right? So we all have customers. And oftentimes when, when they're in the fold and they're working with us and they're buying our products and services, we, we sort of just assume they're good. So we kind of leave them in that, in this customer bucket and they're good. And now we say, well, I got to go get new prospects. I've got to go get new folks. You know, where can I go get, get some more business? Um, the first thing I would tell you is that um, you have to find a way to move your 
you know, you have these prospects, you move them to customers, you move to customers to repeat customers, repeat customers, you move um, to fans, and then fans, you move to raving fans. And so there's an evolution that you want or a path that you want your, these customers in their journey to go on. And so, so it's really important to think about what are you doing in your business to delight the customer? What are you doing to, to create a wow moment? Surprise and delight your customer at, at all, all different turns. Because as you're doing more of that, not just, just you know, accepting that they're buying from you or, you know, um, or, or they're in the fold, if you will, you get, what are you doing on a regular basis? You know, enhancing what your offering is, um, you know, uh, getting feedback from them on the offering and things that they're looking for, new features or, or, or things that they, they would want you to maybe provide. And, you know, there, there's engagement, you know, that you're going to do with those customers. Um, you can also test and see, you know, kind of how, how happy are those customers. And, and you could set, set up sort of a, a, a metric for that. Uh, one way to, to do that is, um, is the net promoter score. So NPS, NPS, Net Promoter Score. So I'd say Google it or Bing it or whatever you use and go uh, look up Net Promoter Score. And don't worry about what scores of other companies are. The, the bottom line is you're gonna figure out your own score. And when you figure out your own score, you're gonna then test that periodically through, through the year, over the years, whatever it may be, and see if your score is going up or down. And it really, the basis of it, and they show you how to quickly calculate it, the basis of it is how likely is your customer uh, to refer you to someone else, right? So I, so I like the product or the service that enough that I want to tell others about it. You know, if we go out and have a great meal at a restaurant, what are we doing? We're talking about it. We're going on social about it. And someone says, hey, you have any suggestions on a good restaurant? I'm like, as a matter of fact, I do. I just went to one the other day. So, so, so that's the experience. If we have a bad experience, what do we do? We tell everyone. We go on social and we, uh, you know, we complain, um, which is a whole nother kind of part of the conversation of, of a pillar there. But, but the, the bottom line is that, that um, what do you do to surprise and delight? Today, more than ever, we need to be doing that. We need to be finding ways to stay in touch with our customers. You know, I've, I've been mentoring and talking to a lot of small businesses in the wake of all that we're doing here as we shelter in home and their retail stores are not essential or, you know, the, the, you know their, their gallery and other things aren't essential and they're not open, what can they be doing? Well, you know, if, you're, if you have fashions for women, you know, uh, um, you know there's, there's always the best dress. Ragna, you're an example that, that whenever you're on a Zoom, you're always looking good. But imagine if that, that retail store that you like did a Zoom fashion show and, and showed you some of the new things and, and you're dressing up to these, do these things almost daily, uh, which is amazing. You know, you might say, well, let me get, let me pick out a few things. And so you don't, you're not able to go to the store. You're not necessarily may, maybe the, you know, you, you buy online, but here's another interactive way that that retailer can be showing stuff, the, the wares of what they have um, and potentially drive business with their, with their current customers. And that might also attract uh, customers to tell others to listen and watch on the Zoom, or maybe it's a live where everyone can see it and someone sees something they like and, and contact you to buy it. So one example. Another, you know, example, you know, the art gallery, you know, these paintings are all sort of collecting dust in the, in the racks that they store it or on the walls, take that out and do a curated um, uh, kind of Zoom show of a particular artist. Because I'm sitting in my place, you know, everyone's sitting home, they're staring at their walls. I could tell you every crack I noticed or, you know, what room needs to be painted and what walls could use some new art. Imagine if there was a gallery uh, the virtual gallery. So, so thinking of ways today of just staying in touch uh, and, and staying in top of mind with your customers and then potentially driving them back and getting them to potentially refer others. So, so there's a lot of things around surprising and delighting. Uh, and, in, and, in, and some of the basic things, you know, I always have a branded card in an envelope. And anytime I'm working with somebody with, tied to a specific business, I write a handwritten note. When's the last time that you've actually got a nice handwritten note about either an experience or a, or a call or just a thank you for being a customer, thank you for believing in us. Um, you know, now more than ever, you know, we, we, welcome, we, we appreciate your support. And imagine you get that nice note, you know, in the mail because we're all sitting home, run into the mailbox to see maybe there's something besides a bill there. Uh, and so, so take advantage 
uh, you know, to where, where you can, um, you know, uh, you know, do something to surprise and delight. Um, so, so the, you know, kind of, if you, uh, if you do that with your current customers and then one thing, you, one thing that's always been true, true over time, your current customer is your best prospect for new customers. Because if you've given them a great experience or you do something to wow them and they're telling others, then they're going to, they're a trusted resource for you. And we all listen to what we, what we hear from a trusted resources before we, we trust what we hear in an ad about a business. If someone said, you know, constant contact is the best thing that, that I've used in my marketing over the last five years. And, and it came from someone who's successful in business. I'm going to listen to that and say, Hey, I should check it out. Um, and so, so if you create the wow moment, it, it pays you in spades. Um, tying into that constant contact, 50% uh, of our business, half our business was referral. We used to say viral, but I'm not going to use that term anymore. So it's referral. Uh, we'll, we'll skip that for the moment. Uh, that's a timely thing. So it's referral or it's someone, you know, seeing something in their inbox that they really liked and they want to kind of go to the bottom and, and they see constant contact and say, I want this too, or or, or a small a small business is talking about it, or or whatever it may be, and I and I've you know been witness to this, uh, especially now more than ever, with folks sharing. You know, you go go online, or you go on these lives, and in a, uh, and the conversations like, what's the best X Y Z tool for this? Or you know, everyone wants to share. You know, they're everyone's in a share mode to learn what are the best tools. You know, that folks should be either using because now you have time on your hands to maybe go sort of research and, and learn about them. But I would just say the one thing you have to think about is stay in your lane. Like whatever you're really good at, stay in that lane and keep doing that. If, you, if you're one who likes to tinker and play and figure things out, sure, go, go do the research and, and download trials of products and try them or team with someone else because your time is so valuable to focus on what you're good in your own lane. And maybe you could be teaming up with somebody else that could actually deliver those services for you um, and save you your, your, your time value money of just focusing on what you're better at. Um, so, so I think there's a lot of ways to grow the business um, uh, and to you know, keep your customers you know, delighted and then creating that wow moment and, of course, moving them to raving fans when they're going to be the best person to, to drive more leads for you. We already have, uh, in, in Facebook, we have uh, people, there's a lot of people from Estonia. Thank you. <laughs> Obviously, startup, it's, it's one of the countries which have, I think, the most startups and, uh, and uh, actually it has been very successful stories. Most of them has been uh, successful, like Skype, like uh, there's, a, there's a lot of them which, which now are internationally known. So, so thank you all the Estonians which have joined us and are joining us every, every day. We have people from India. We have actually already three questions for you from India. Uh, so everybody who are watching us or you are here on the Zoom call, there's an area where it, ch it says chat. If you would like to ask a question, you can already type the question there. So as soon as Alec is going to give us his three recommendations, how to dominate the decade, we're going to answer all the questions that we have in Facebook and also here in Zoom. So uh, get your questions ready. And um, please, Alec, what would you recommend, the three recommendations, how to dominate your decade? Yeah, to, uh, so dominate the decade, let's see. Um, well, one of the things, one of the things that, that I'd say first and foremost is that, um, you know, I, I like to say that, you know, we're, we get caught up in working in the tactics of our business every day and we get on this kind of wheel where we're just, we just going through those motions and, 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 um, and it's really important. Um, um, it's really important for you to, to, um, to step out of the business and focus on strategy. Um, especially today more than ever, you know, it, it's just really key to say, okay, Maybe the way you were doing things before will, will never be done that way again. Maybe they will, but, but with some, some tweaking, you know, there's a lot of unknowns. But if you can step back and look at your business and say, okay, what can I do strategically? Am I, am I really in the, in the kind of that, the, the, the bullseye of the dartboard? And, and so, so I, I say that because 
there may be things adjacent to exactly what you're doing today where there's a bigger opportunity. And I think it's important to, um, it's really important to look at that and, and test that. Uh, and so it's very easy today because we're all home uh, to, if, you, if you're starting something and you need to get feedback from your target market through your network or who you know, you could find someone who's in your target market. I'm sure they'd be happy to jump on a call or, or a video, uh, video conversation. You can run things by them and have that dialogue and engagement. You know, you could be do a lot of things that set you up so that the minute that the doors open again, literally for us to be out uh, in business, um, you know, you, you're, you're prepared and ready to go. And I've talked to several where we had breakthroughs to just, just about ways that they could just tweak, tweak a little bit of what they were doing to, to accommodate how we're doing things today, but more importantly, setting themselves up for the future. So when they took themselves out of the day-to-day -day tactics, which you know we all have, have to do today, that it's easier to, to really kind of think and look broader you know, for, for that opportunity. So I think, that, um, I think that's, uh, that's, that's one thing. I think the second thing is that um, uh, I think we, I kind of call this um, look big, act big, become big. Look, look big, act big, become big. And so there's a lot of things around perception. And I, I just see all too often today that we're a little bit lazy for kind of how we put ourselves uh, uh, forward. Um, uh, hats off to you, Ragnar, for, for all the marketing that you do around the, the Dominate the Decade program. And you made it all so, so easy for, for all of us to be able to promote, promote our, our sessions and all the great ones that uh, you've had, plus the ones that are coming. Uh, but think about what can you do in terms of the branding of yourself and, and, and how you're presenting yourself and how you look, you know, so, you know, again, perception. I see, I meet so many folks that want to get on a call to tell me about their business and they, and they just want to chat. And then they'll send me an email and I'll ask, I'll ask an audience always, how many of you have an email that ends in Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, AOL? Uh, att.net or you know whatever whatever the, they are around the world of the generic you know email you know free email accounts and and I'd say 30 to 40 percent of the hands go up in the room and so if you're not serious enough to spend the five dollars a month that you have a domain and you can't spend the five dollars to, to to use your domain for your email uh, and don't do my company at gmail you know do you at mycompany.com like you want to make sure that you're again perception putting your your best foot forward so so i think to dom to dominate you everyone has to perceive that you you're big and and even when you're a startup don't don't be hesitant to do stuff um we all are hesitant and um you know and so for example if you have that strategic customer or that strategic partner or that one that you want to be working with um don't just get on the phone or get on a zoom and chit chat you know create five slides that say, you know, uh, this is who we are, you know, this is what we do, this is what makes us unique, this is what our customers are saying, and this maybe this is how we could work together, or, or you know, some, some ways that we might, you know, spend a little time and research how you think there's a good, what's the fit in you working together. And then you get on a Zoom call, or, or you, and you, and you say, do you mind if I just, um, you know, kick things off with a few slides that I created for, for today's call? And like, sure, go ahead. They're always going to say yes. And now you own this, and it's branded. It's your look. It's your, it's your, your image, you know, your logo and your images. And, uh, you know, and it's just, you know, well presented. And it looks like it's not your first time calling someone like that, like, uh, like that even though it might be. Uh, but they don't know. And again, perception. So now you're done. You take a PDF of that. And you send it off to them after the call. Uh, and then they don't have to play telephone game of what did I hear? Now let me try to tell someone else what I heard. And then by the third person, they're like, they, they're kind of turn their head like a dog. They're like, Woo? like what? And then they're like, we don't need that. And so, so you, you avoid that because they can go re uh, refresh you know, their memory looking at the slides. They could share the slides. And then again, someone sees that someone behind this is very professional. Um, and then when you get on the second call with the team, you could say, hey, I know, you know, we set the, set the slides over. Maybe some of you saw it, but just a level set. Do you mind if we kick things off and I'll go through those slides to frame the conversation? And they always say yes. You know, imagine that. So now you're putting your best foot forward again. Um, and so, so that's just one example. But I just find that um, 
you know, there's so many of us just feel like, you know, social and Twitter and other things have, have, have um, given us this, this, this approach to just do things short and sweet and quick. And, uh, and so I'm not saying to, to, to belabor points here, but, but uh, take too long, but just put your best foot forward. Um, the other thing is that, you know, um, there, we all have that strategic person we want to call, whether it's a partner, an investor, a mentor, uh, you know, a customer, we all have somebody that we want to call. And I'll ask in a, in a, in a conference, show of hands, how many of you have that, that one person you want to call, but you're hesitant to call them? You're waiting for something. Every hand goes up. We all have it. And so I would say to you, you know, you, you, can't, you can't wait. You can't hesitate, and even even today more so. Um, you have to get yourself uh, uh, fired up and excited and ready to make that call. And so, so one thing, uh, one thing that I would say is that, um, you know, if you're hesitant, you know, your energy they're going to feel it through the phone. They're going to feel it when you're on a on a Zoom call. Like it's going to not come across, and they're they're not going to absorb that that energy. Uh, and so, um, so you have to get fired up. How do you get yourself fired up, ready to make that call, or, or uh, you know, do the Zoom call, have the meeting? Um, and so you can, you know, call a loved one. You can hug a baby, pet a dog. Uh, you could sing your favorite song. Uh, so at a lot of conferences <clears throat> lately, people have queued up my song and made me sing it. Uh, so we don't have that here, thankfully. For your, uh, this is for your benefit that I don't sing, not mine. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so, um, so it's Don't Stop Believing by Journey. And that's my go-to song. And so I, I put that on and I belt it out and I get fired up and I make, the, make that phone call. And I have a great call. And after you have a great call, what do you do? And the answer usually in the, in the room, people yell out, celebrate. And the answer is no, make another call. And you have another call that's good, then make another call. At the end of the day, after you've nailed a bunch of those calls, then you can celebrate. So think about the things you can do. Um, you, uh, to do that today, because if it's a strategic partnership, they can take a nine months to a year to close. So you're going to sit here and wait because you're hesitant and then tack on a year uh, when you finally make the call. So might, might as well get yourself fired up and make it today and start the clock ticking to get you closer to closing a partnership with them. Even though you feel you're not 100% ready or, or the website's not good enough or whatever, you can explain some of those things to say, yeah, we're reworking our website. Um, bear with us on that. But by the way, let's just talk about what we can do together. And, and everyone's more than willing. And, um, and people are available today, you know, more so because they're not deep into the, that wheel of the, the tactics. So think about what you can do to, um, you know, to fire yourself up. And then I'll give you, I'll give you a quick third one. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're all doing something unique today. Uh, so 85% of the businesses today that are starting are, are you know, it's a, it's a product or service that already existed, but you've decided to say there's a better way. You, you see, you had an idea to say this, this could be done better. And by the way, I always ask folks, um, do you think you're an innovator? And 90% of the people say no. I said, but do you have an idea on any given day, day week or month, do you see something and, and have an idea that, that service could have been delivered better or that product could have been made better. Imagine if that product had this feature, how many have, have those ideas and, and every single hand goes up. And the only difference between someone who has an idea and someone who's an innovator is if you have an idea and you bring it forward, you tell someone else or you ask someone to work on it with you, or you go to a friend who can maybe prototype it with you with a 3d printer or whatever it may be to, to noodle on the idea and share it and show others you're an innovator. So it doesn't take much to transition you over to being an innovator if you take action. Um, and so, so my, my point is that we're all doing something today because we're passionate about what we're doing and we believe what we're gonna do is better than what already exists. Or the other 15% are stuff, something that never existed before. In the case of Constant Contact, offering digital marketing services to small businesses, you know, Uber, Airbnb, Facebook, et cetera. So there's a ton of, you know, folks that are, that are, um, that are doing these, uh, sort of these things that are unique, but in either case, if you want to dominate, uh, you've got to package stuff, uh, stuff up to be able to, uh, to come up with best practices. And so everyone, you know, I just want you to all raise your right hand. Go ahead, raise your right hand virtually. Uh, I now 
declare all of you thought leaders. So, so you can celebrate. You're all thought leaders. So you're doing something unique. You've got to package it up and be able to tell that story. And I'm not saying give away the secret sauce. I'm saying give away, you know, uh, um, things that will, will guide folks to, to you because you're, you're showing, showing them how to do it better. And so if you do that, you're going to attract your customers. You're going to attract your partners. You're going to attract association of member orgs because they're hungry for good content and things that can help your target market, who is their members, succeed. So think of ways you can do that. Uh, those are just sort of three kind of just quick top ahead ideas of how I would uh, attack uh, domi dominating the decade, which uh, we uh, we should be doing. We're in the decade, so yeah, you got to get going. Oh, I love it. I don't know if you see it or not, but I have a, I have so many, I, I took so many notes <laughs> for myself where I can improve, exactly where I can improve and, and take it to the uh, next level. So Great. we have, we have questions. We have uh, from India. I love the comment that the, the five tips or, or how to do your slides. We, he put the name on it. So it's a five finger focus. <laughs> five, five finger focus. There you go. So it's a it's a good one, no? And, All right, I'll take that. Uh, I like it. And let's see. Um, he was asking, uh, Sridach, uh, He was asking, uh, don't you think that this NPS is a uh, bias be, uh, because it's leading? Uh, I think he meant the uh, net yeah, the, the yeah net promoter score NPS. Yeah. What's the question? Oh, uh, uh biased because it's leading is it uh, is it something that uh, the small business owners really can can use or is it useful for small business owners yeah so so the question is is the N, the, the nps scoring is that is that useful for small business and so um i think it's useful for any business and i any any of the startups that i'm working with we're, we're starting to institute that, you know, once you get to a place where you start um, having customers, you know, you're going to go out and you, you want to, first of all, the bigger question in the, in that is, is um, feedback. You, you want to be gaining feedback from your customers. There's, there's online formal ways to do that. And there's offline, you know, informal ways to do it. Offline asking them, how likely are you to refer, you know, refers to someone else tells a sentiment that they like you enough to want to and trust you enough to want to tell someone else. And so online is doing formal surveys or, or asking them questions formally. And, and you should be doing a cycle of that with, with any of your customers today. So feedback is a gift, you know, positive, negative. You want to take that and, and, and use, it, use it as you see accordingly. Um, and then N the NPS is just a, as a way to sort of come up with a score with someone telling you honestly how likely they are to refer you. If your NPS score is, is tw you know, let's say it's 20 numbers, you know, just, just for conversation's sake. Um, and then you you started instituting doing uh, some putting in some new new uh, new things into the product and the service. You're 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 uh, tightening down maybe um, you know the, the the how how to use it or coming up with some tutorials to make it easier or or make it less frictionless. They had issues with, you know with certain things they told you and you fixed them. And then you go and survey again and now you're at 32. You know so you should, your score went up. How likely they're going to refer you to others? That's that's a real powerful thing to know. Just as if you did some things and it weren't, they weren't great, and your score went down. So it's it's only a measurement, and it could be directional, and you use it as you see fit. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to paint a brush across all small businesses to say this is something that will work for them. But I don't think it's biased to ask questions of your of your customers. Um, you know, if they're if they've moved to a fan or a raving fan to want to tell others, um, capturing that. You know, if they're if they're being honest with you. You know, and, and you have to sort of assess that and, and read into it to see if it's valuable. But I think it can show if they're on a happy path as a customer or if they dip down or if they're going up. And it's just one of the things, including just, you know, getting feedback and, and staying in touch and checking in with them, you know, will we'll give, you, give you that the info, inf, informally as well. So we have here, we have, um, what are the new business sectors you see opportunities now? <laughs> Well, uh, the immediate sectors are anything that's, um, you know, that any of these needed products. Uh, so all the PEE, PPE and all needed products, obviously. 
anything in logistics, you know, and, and the movement of uh, products, goods and services, the way we think we're going to be moving things, you know, uh, logistics is, it will pay, play, uh, play something key. Um, you know, as for a specific industry, you know, I think, um, you know, we've, we've carved out, you know, uh, we're all seeing um, how we're, we're going to be doing a lot more virtually going forward. You know, vir you know, some, you know, lives were about, you know, how my day is going and now lives are about, you know, concrete, you know, businesses, um, uh, ideas and, you know, summits and podcasts and things that I think we'll be supplementing in more virtual while, while uh, in between the time that they might do their annual conference or quarterly conference, you know, live when we can go back to that, you know, where we're, we're face to face. So, so there's tools, there's, there's technologies, there's, you know, sort of a lot of different things. And, you know, I haven't really spent a lot of time, you know, I've got my head down on a lot of things I'm working on and just helping existing businesses. So I don't know industries to, I'm uh, not a, not kind of a true business economist here to say which specific ones, but I think there's opportunity everywhere. And, and now you have a chance, you know, while, while if you think you have a lot of competitors, um, you know, maybe some are sort of just sheltering in home and not really doing a lot with the business. So capitalize on it, take advantage of doing a lot yourself and, and, um, and, and see if you can, you know, create, create more opportunity in your own, your own sector. And then we have how uh, how difficult will it be to keep your customers as raving fans in the future? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so you know, uh, I mean, I think having someone to become a raving fan is earned. You know, they don't just be, they they become one because they 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 love something about you. They they either love love you, love the staff, love the product and service, uh, love what it's doing for them, and so uh, you know, I think. <clears throat> You know, customers are going to be, uh, all, will always be important to all of us, and they're going to be even more important going forward. Again, because they're, they're the best prospect for new customers. So, so you want to be staying in touch. You want to find ways to delight them today. And as I gave you a couple of examples earlier about <clears throat> different industries, to how you can move things on virtually to continue to, continue to work with them. Um, be creative. You know, I just... Uh, Learned about you know uh, stories about restaurants that you know there's some takeout and delivery services which many can do not all can, um, but but you know some uh, seeing someone that was uh, offering if you buy a hundred dollar gift certificate to to come back and enjoy us in the future, uh, we'll give you one hundred fifty dollars worth of credit for a hundred dollars today, and they made thirty thousand um, dollars and that was enough to keep the. Uh, you know, keep paying rent, you know, and the employees and, and doing that while they're waiting for a stimulus and other things, you know, uh, to, to uh, supplement that. So, so just, you know, again, I think doing stuff to, to delight, to light, delighting the customer today will go up, go in spades when, when we're, we're, when we're this pent up want to go out and shop local and support our, you know, do the things we used to always love to do and go to the places we love to shop and, and experience and, and when that when that fires up, you know, then there's an opportunity to, uh, you know, to to, you know, do do more to keep top of mind with them today. And then we have how do you define your niche? Uh, and the person is uh, I work with public service groups to train potential leaders to be leaders. Nobody is training these people; they are just promoting them. How do I grow referrals in this market? So. How do you define a niche and how do you grow referrals in specific markets? Yeah, and so, 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 so training public service leaders and how do we go and grow that, that uh, niche and, 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 um, and support that. And so it's some of what I had talked about with, regarding channels. Uh, first and foremost, the public service folks are, are tied into different organizations where they go to you know, as a trusted source where they go to get their learnings, potentially publications that they're reading, you know, to, to learn uh, and getting yourself exposed through through them. There might be a complimentary set of folks that are training them on other things besides leadership, where you could be you know, sort of a, a, another module tied into some other trainings from someone else. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways to complement what others are doing or getting access to, to them through where they're, where they're hanging out. Um, and I think that, you know, uh, again, you're doing something unique. If they're not, if no one's doing it today and you're doing something unique, how do you package up and share that? Tell that story so that 
other uh, folks using it can share that with others to say, hey, here's the program I went through. Get some 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 live testimonials of folks coming on to it and telling it, telling their experience or or recording a quick little video and or getting their getting their words and really promote up um, the you know kind of the you know the success stories because people will always say, well, what others like me? What other leaders like me? Um, you know, are using this or have taken advantage of it? So. So any way you can exp uh, sort of tell the story through the voice of others that have experienced it will only help you as you go to get, get, get more. Beautiful, very helpful, <laughs> yeah, indeed. And I see a lot that uh, where we really can, uh, can put our attention is also how we, uh, we look at our product and services and, and how we're packaging them. So, like the offer stack is becoming more and more important i think it's not it's not just deliver a service or or, or product it's like how can we over deliver now so and especially in the times that we are uh, are uh, having or, or or currently currently experiencing so um i let me see if i see any other questions here yes. Great, great, uh, great uh, comments. I like this epic, tried and true startup genius. Your advice has helped me more than once, Alec. So sorry, can you repeat all those? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> the connection got so bad, no? Yeah, no, I just love to hear them again. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would send you the, the screen. <laughs> Well, I wanted to thank you. Um, can you share with us how people can contact you? Maybe there's some people that uh, were shy today to ask questions publicly, but they would uh, love to ask questions from you. Sure. Is, there a, is there a possibility to connect with you directly? Yeah, so there's a way to stay in constant contact. <laughs> <laughs> no pun. Yes, it's a pun. Uh, so uh, the first thing is uh, uh, visit my uh, website, which is um, Alec, A L E C, speaks, S P E A K S, Alec speaks.com. And there's uh, all the links to my social there. And um, I got to beta test most of the tools. Uh, so it's just my name, Alec Stern, which is in the corner of the Zoom there, um, A L E C S T E R N. Uh, that's, you know, you can find, find me in most of the social, social tools and, you know, LinkedIn with a message or, 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 you know others would uh, would work um and then i do want to offer up um you know so so i have uh kind of a, a a workbook that you can access and and so uh it'll talk about the pillars i i i shared with you and then there's some some others i didn't uh just given time and and so i had to set our priorities here so if you were to uh text the keyword um pillars p i l l a R S pillars, all capitalized, P I L L A R S pillars, and text that to five nine nine two five. That's five nine nine two five. Uh, you'll give your name and an email. You'll see see a confirmation back with my name, Alec, and then you go. You can go in and you can uh, download a workbook. It's a short workbook. Uh, you can watch. Uh, there's there's a fun video intro video of mine. Of some of the stuff I'm doing, and then there's also uh, there's a place to uh, for feedback. So if you want to, feedback's a gift. If you want to give me uh, some comments around what I talked about today, or maybe some things that you were uh, that you were looking at, uh, looking for that I maybe didn't cover, and and so forth, I'd welcome any feedback. So uh, you get it. You can get it there at, at uh, five nine nine two five with the word pillars. Uh, there might be case that outside of the United States it doesn't work. I tried my mine didn't go through now. So. Oh, didn't okay. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a link. Um, I guess uh, we could try to put a link into the comments of the yes. uh, actually you know, to the to the actual uh, workbook. Okay. Yeah, we will do so. So uh, afterwards, you will find it here. I will also share it on the Coral Desk uh, Facebook page and how to dominate the decade uh, facebook page so so look look up if you if you send the, the message and i know that we have a lot of people from we have people from uk india 
uh, uh, then we have from Estonia, then we have from the United States, obviously, Mexico. Thank you, all the Los Cabos community, which you are taking notes, hopefully. <laughs> I will call you after. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's, uh, yeah there's, a quiz, there's a quiz. We have to uh, give them a quiz. <laughs> exactly. So, and, and, uh, but thank you. I, I think uh, what uh, really stayed in my mind and uh, which I'm going to use, and I can say that Alex Jordan was the one that planted that seed in my, my, my brain, is that um, be the innovator. And uh, the innovator is someone that has the idea, but also takes the action. And I think this is very, very important in the times that we are experiencing today. So if you want to change your life, then you need to start taking the action. And as he said, look, act, and become big. You cannot do it if you don't take the steps or if you don't action. So anything that he shared today, if you don't take the action, and listen very carefully, if you don't take action within 48 hours, forget about it. Because there's so much information that comes on top of it and then just disappears. So if you want to be the change maker of your life, you take action in 48 hours. If you want to be the hero and the change maker in someone else's life, you share this video, you ask the questions about this video, because then you want to really know that the person really watched the video. And that will not only help that person, it will also help you. Because then you understand how you can apply and it will open up your mind. So do it for yourself, grow yourself and take the most of it. It's your home. You're sitting watching the screen. Thank you. We, we both thank you for, for the time that you dedicated uh, to, to listen to us. And, and really, I hope you made notes like I did, but uh, nothing, absolutely nothing works if you don't do the work. And um, I will see you tomorrow at the same time with uh, uh, an incredible person from Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, obviously you need to follow and, uh, and uh, see who he is, just to have a little trip here. Um, but Alec, what would you like to say as your final words to everybody which were joining us live today and uh, whoever is going to watch this video afterwards? Yeah, so uh, I guess the, uh, the one thing I would just say is uh, it's go time. You know, as, as mentioned, um, you know, uh, we, we, we were, uh, um, focus on the uh, kind of your circle of influence, the people that, that can influence you, whether you, you know them today or, or you want to know them, focus on those and, 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 uh, and not get caught up in the concerns and the mire of all the stuff that we're dealing with. We, let's face it, we're, we're sheltering at home, got it. I did it yesterday, I'm gonna do it today, I'm gonna do it tomorrow, got it, okay? Let's not worry about that. Let's it's go time to, to, to go to the next level and. And, and dust off an idea or create a new idea or, you know, whatever it is that you're, that you are, you're thinking you wanted to kind of get to, but, but the day to day prevents you now's, now's the time to step up and do it. So I guess I would just say, as you, you were saying, uh, it's go time and no time like the present. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Alec, for help, helping us, for giving us your golden nuggets and sharing your experience with us. So I will see you everybody tomorrow. Have a wonderful day and uh, apply, apply everything and take action. Thank you very much. Thank you.